Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I am in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about the eight different things that I love and use pretty darn frequently in this product. Uh, you may have heard already that Luminar Neo just turned three. So they're having a three-year anniversary sale. And in fact, I'd like to thank the Luminar Neo team for sponsoring this video. What I want to do in this video, as I said, is walk through eight different things and give you a demonstration of how I use them, why they matter to you, but also just talk about the innovation that's happened in these three years. Because if you remember, when the tool first came out, it didn't have everything that we wanted in it. But if you fast forward these three years, it's a complete robust product with an amazing amount of functionality and capability and tools that I think are innovative and frankly, no one else has ever thought of. And I'm going to walk through some of that in this video. First, check out the three-year anniversary sale. Whether you're a new user or a current lifetime license owner, there are different deals here. The bottom line is, you can save money and you get a bunch of free stuff and you get an amazing app that I can teach you how to use because I've got 200 plus videos here on YouTube doing just that. Now, if you do want to check out the offers, there's a link down below. Note, it is an affiliate link. They pay me a referral commission if you use it. And I also have a coupon code, GYMNEX15, that'll save you an additional 15% if you want to check it out. Again, thanks to the Luminar team for sponsoring this video. And what I want to do is walk through the different things that I like to use the most in Luminar Neo and why they matter and why they're useful to you, show you how to take advantage of them. So let's start with feature number one, that's Relight AI. So that's in the creative tools. I've got a photo here. I've already done some editing. I've already brightened that, doing my typical one, two punch, that is develop raw and super contrast. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how I approach editing in Luminar Neo, I've got a free ebook that I offer on my website to anyone that subscribes to my newsletter. That link is down below. Check that out if you'd like to, but Relight AI, it's essentially uh, a like a linear gradient that allows you to adjust the temperature, which is down here, as well as the brightness, either near or far. And you get to define that with this depth slider. So for example, if I want to brighten this foreground a little bit, I can just drag, I'm going to drag it pretty high just to make it obvious. I'm going to drag the brightness near slider. And you can see there's basically a line right there. And that's where depth comes in, where I can lift that and drag that brightness to where it's a little bit more aligned with the horizon, like that. Now, and that's a good way to approach it, is to make it brighter than you might actually need, or darker, so that you can see the line better and get that depth just where you want it. And then I'd come back and kind of ratchet that down a little bit. And if you look at it there, if you go before and after, you can see I've had a nice little impact on the light. But the cool thing is I can also adjust temperature. Maybe I want to include a little bit of additional warmth in near. And now that I've already defined the depth, the, uh, the sky is going to be considered the far. So I can go ahead and drag some warmth into the far, and that's going to be going into the sky primarily, right? Because that's where I've defined it with Relight. And so that's a powerful tool once before and after. It gives you a lot of control over your image and your edit. It's a great way to combine a, a temperature adjustment with a light adjustment in a single tool. So that's number one. Now, number two is HDR batch processing. And if you've been here a while or follow any of my other videos, you know that I use HDR a lot. In fact, I love it. And on this Iceland trip, which is where all these photos were from, which is a, uh, one of the Luminar trips to Iceland. Um, I took a bunch of brackets because that's what I do when I'm out. I don't always create HDR, but I want to point something out here uh, about HDR Merge, which is over here, which is included in your subscription or your purchase. Uh, I've got 13 different images here, uh, but there's a duplicate, right? So I've got 4067 right here. I've already done some editing to that photo. And then I've got 4067 here again, an, an unedited version, but they're both raw files. So I want to point out what happens here. I've got these 13 images. I'm going to drag them over to HDR Merge. And you've got different options here for alignment, distortion correction, ghost reduction, all that kind of stuff. I recommend ticking those. That's something I do every time. And if you want to do a batch HDR, just tick that batch HDR box and then click Merge. And what you'll see is a window that comes up that says, hey, here's the different bracket sets we've identified. Is this right? Do you want to go ahead and continue? Now, if you hit continue, it'll merge those into HDRs and drop them into your HDR merge folder. I'm not going to go through that step. I just want to show you something. It's it's grouped them here the way it sees them, which is uh, here's a file. I'm just using the last couple of digits, 24, 25, and 26. Those go together. Here's 39, 40, and 41. Those go together. Remember I had 67 twice. Well, here it's picked 66 and 67 as one group. And then the other 67 and, and then 68 as a separate group. Note that it doesn't show the edited version because when you're creating an HDR, it's taking the raw files. So if you have an edited version and uh, of a raw file, it's going to take that raw file and kind of wipe out your edits, so to speak. 
Um, but the thing is, I've got two of these. I don't need to. I can just delete that to get rid of it. And then I can drag this up here and put it with its friend. Now I've got 40, uh, 66, 67, and 68 together. And then the other one, 96, 97, and 98. So now I've got four different sets of brackets from a beautiful evening at this waterfall in Iceland on the Luminar trip. But that's how you use HDR Batch Merge. And like I said, it'll drop them all into your HDR file and give you beautiful results. Because I love doing HDRs in Luminar. If you've been here, you know that because I do that quite a bit. So that's another feature that I love. I'm gonna go ahead and clear those out because I don't need them. So you can just remove all images and you're back to not having anything ready to go in HDR Merge. I'm gonna go back to this river scene and I wanna jump into a couple of other features that I think are really cool and really innovative and something that I like to use quite a bit. The next one is color transfer. Now the name is deceptively simple, but incredibly accurate. And that is it transfers colors from one image to another. It's basically cloning and stamping the color look in one image and sticking it on this image. So you may have seen other videos I've done about this, but you can pick a reference selection. That's the image that you wanna take the colors from. I wanna add them to this image, but I need to pick a reference image first. Now I've got my own pack that I sell on my website. I'm gonna go ahead and click this one, which is a beautiful sunset. That was also a beautiful sunset, and it will essentially clone and stamp the colors from that reference image onto this one like that. Now it's defaulting to 60, which I think is a bit high, but I'm gonna pull that back a little bit, but I still get a nice intense color look without having to do anything other than a couple of clicks. So before and after, get a nice beautiful sunset look transferred from one image to another with a couple of clicks. And that's the beauty of some of this innovation that I'm talking about that they've been doing over the last three years. They're just bringing out these features that we can use uh, on all of our photos and get really, really beautiful results. And really what it comes down to for me is they're saving us time. It doesn't mean I can't achieve that color sunset look on my own, because I can, because the reference image I did in Luminar a few years ago, but it gives me the ability to speed up my workflow and move on to things. And speaking of speeding up workflow, here's another a tool that I love, another one of these eight innovations that I'm talking about, and that is Twilight Enhancer. So in a similar vein, it doesn't, um, the last one I did uh, color transfer for a sunset, it doesn't always have to be a sunset, but in this case, it's Twilight Enhancer. So it goes great with a photo like this. You've got different color presets. I'm gonna go stick with mauve, and I'm just gonna move that to, let's call it 60, and apply that here to the photo, and boom, it hits that photo with that color look. Now, it's a little bit much, and that's okay. You've got the amount slider, you can adjust that, but you've got other sliders as well to make further refinements to really uh, get this photo looking the way you want it to look. And I'm just kind of playing here a little bit. I'm gonna just move these around, until I kind of find what it is that I want exactly in my image. And I'm gonna play with that a little bit. And so now you'll notice it says custom here because I've made further refinements to it. But if you look at the before and the after, right? Before and after, I've quickly been able to essentially relight the scene, create that twilight or sunset look, enhance the sunset that was already there, enhance the colors that were there, and enhance the light. So before and after, that's another interesting and powerful and I think amazing innovation, Twilight Enhancer. It's one of my favorite tools. And one more really cool thing that they did that's also AI-based is Water Enhancer. And this is something that I used to do all the time. I would get a brush and I would go paint into the water and I would brighten it and I would change colors. We don't have to do that anymore. Now you just move a couple of sliders. It automatically finds the water. I hover, you can see what it's found is water. And by the way, you can go into Refine Area and add to it if you want to. So like if you want to cover that plant or a little bit closer to the edge here, you can just do that. And all it does is apply whatever slider adjustments you make to that water. It masked it automatically, it found it. I didn't have to tell it, it just said, hey, I see water. Now in this case, I've got blue. I can go more blue if I want. I don't want to go that high. I can put in a little green if I need to, which I don't. Or I can bring back some of the original color to create a nice balance without getting out of hand. But I also have the brightness slider, which I love because I've often done that in the past. Like I said, I would adjust colors, but I'd also adjust light. And this is just working so well. You can see what it's doing to the water. So I can bring that up really nicely. I don't need to refine the area anymore, but I've got a beautiful look here, I think, to that water. And I might do a little bit more. So if you go before and after, you get that nice look to the water. And what really happens and starts to have a huge impact on your photo is when you stack these different adjustments. So color transfer, uh, transfer or twilight enhancer with water enhancer, you start to get some really, really powerful results and some really beautiful images without having to do tons of tedious work. And that's why I love these innovations. 
Now, those are five innovations that I think are really cool. Now, there's three more things I want to talk about because I did say there are eight. And one of the things that came out this year uh, or in the last year that I think is so incredibly powerful and so useful is a luminosity mask. I use them on every photo. They're absolutely powerful and just amazing. And I love them. And uh, I talk about them a lot. Um, I've used Color Harmony here and I applied a bunch of color adjustments to this photo. Uh, but one of the things I like to do with my colors is make sure that they're applying to specific parts of a photo. And for me, that's often involving masking. In fact, it's almost always involving masking. And when you apply them to sp specific parts of a photo, you can use things like a linear gradient or a radial gradient or whatever. But I like to use luminosity mask because that separates the uh, tonal values, right? It separates the light uh, by tonal values. So I can quickly just say, hey, this needs to go into the highlights, which is what I've just done. Um, or I can pull it out of the highlights and fade that into the highlights, have it more concentrated on the midtones and shadows, and then fade it into the shadows as well. So you get a nice, beautiful distribution of that color across the image without really being too in your face in any particular area. And I like to do that quite a bit. In fact, I use this in a lot of my different videos. And now the color application here is a less intense version of what I did because I used a luminosity mask. So now it's hitting a lot of the midtones and fading into the highlights and also fading into the shadows. So there it is before and there it is now. And that's the beauty of luminosity mask. Super powerful, so much control, and I love them. And that's one of the other things that I love. Now, speaking of masks, there's another mask type that I'm a big fan of and I've been using a lot as well. And I'm going to show you that in this photo. So this photo is something that I've already edited. This photo's edited, but I'm not quite done. I want to do one more thing. And what I like to do is apply structure, but I really just want to apply structure to the mountain and to the reflection of the mountain. I don't want it in the water, and I don't really want it in this other part of the reflection. So what I would do in the past is I'd come drag the structure to the right, and you can see it's impacting the entire image. Not what I want, as I said. In the past, I used to go into masking, and I'd get a brush, and I would just kind of tediously paint it into those areas. I don't have to do that anymore because there is something called a color range mask. And a color range mask, as the name implies, allows you to select a color and it'll create a mask for that color or a range of colors near it. So what I would do in this case is come in and say, hey, that mountain and the reflection, it's pretty much orange. And by the way, not a lot of orange in the rest of the photo. So this is a great way to use a color mask. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab that color there. And once I do that, you're going to see it's going to highlight in red that uh, part of the photo. Now it's missed some of these. And so you can either contract or reduce, right, the amount or the range, but you can also increase it. So by increasing it, I'm going to pick up more and more of that. Now it gets a little bit over here in the sky. That's fine. But if you look at my mask now, if you look at the before and after, I've nearly perfectly gotten the area that I wanted. Now it is overlapping a little bit over there. So that's where you can come in with a brush and an eraser. And you can just come in here and erase those little bits. Uh, wherever they might be overlapping into an area you don't want, including down here. Maybe I don't want that, and maybe I don't want that little bit there. But there you go. I mean, quick and easy, so much quicker and so much easier than it used to be. So before and after. And the other innovation that I love, and I love masking. If you've been here before, you know that, and that is object select masking, which works great on landscapes and cityscapes for you to grab something and brighten it or add structure or whatever, but it also works on wildlife. And so let's say, in this case, again, slightly edited this photo with my one-two punch, develop raw and super contrast, so before and after, before and after. Uh, not a very big uh, adjustment, but I want to add structure to that horse that's white, right? Uh, now, if I add structure to the whole photo, I start getting a little bit of grain in the background, and this guy's nicely out of focus, I think, because I'm really focused on this rock star looking horse in Iceland. But I, I don't really like the structure there, and again, this is where masking comes in. And in the past, I would go in with a brush mask and brush it. But now with object select, you can come in and you can just hover your mouse over the horse and it highlights it in red. I click it once to select it. It turns dark red and there we go. My masking is done. So now my structure applies just there and that background and that other horse blissfully untouched by that mask. So before and after, and that's another innovation. So those are the eight things that I think about, use, talk about, uh, and love in Luminar Neo. And three years later, I mean, it's been game-changing innovation and some amazing, powerful tools that allow you to edit more accurately, more quickly, have more fun doing it. That's why I love Luminar Neo and have so much fun with it. Check out the three-year anniversary special offer at the link below. Don't forget to check out my free, free ebook as well. 
I'll be back soon, my friends, with more videos. If you have questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Until next time, adios.